Today I want to show off how to create a custom observable collection. So observable collections in WPF offer us a list like API where we can add, remove, or insert items. But what if that API doesn't really fit our application? What if a queue or a stack will be better off for our application? Well then we would want something like an observable queue or an observable stack. And that is exactly what we're going to make in this demo. Let me start off by introducing this demo. So I kind of have this drive through setup. Let's start this up. And if you think about it, a drive through is kind of like a queue because the first car in is going to be the first car out in most cases, I would hope. Otherwise, everything else would get messed up with the orders. But anyways, for this application, you can put in the item you want to order, submit it. And that actually doesn't work right now because we don't have an observable queue yet. But when we submit, let me go to my submit order command. We submit and we submit the order to our view model, which puts it into our orders queue that currently has one of the orders. That's an order view model that we created in the submit order command. But we're not using an observable queue. So our UI does not get updated. Right now we're just using a regular queue. So we need an observable queue. So let me create a new folder in my application. We're just going to call this utilities because that's exactly what this is. It's just a utility that offers us a queue API that's also observable. And inside here, we are going to create our observable queue. So there's actually many ways we could do this. We could wrap an observable collection with a queue API that does things like in queue and D queue. We could wrap a queue and then do what we need to do to make it observable or we could just inherit from Q and that's going to be the easiest approach. So I'm going to go with that. So we're going to inherit from Q and we're going to make this generic. So we will make our observable Q generic as well. So now we have the same exact Q API we're inheriting from Q, but we need to make this an observable Q. So we need to implement I notify collection changed import that and implement that interface. And that just requires that we have this collection changed event that we need to raise whenever our queue changes. So when is our collection going to change? Well, it's going to change whenever we enqueue an item into our queue. So what we need to do is override our queues enqueue method. So let's first get that method in here. I believe it's void and that is enqueue. And that takes the item that we want to enqueue. And first off, we need to actually enqueue the item. So we can do that by calling the base enqueue method and pass in our item. But then what just happened? Our collection changed. So we need to raise collection change. So we will take that event and invoke it. The sender is this, and we need to pass in some notify collection changed event arc. So let's instantiate those. And there's a ton of constructors for this. So the first parameter is what kind of action happened? Well, in this case, we added an item. So we will set our action as add. And then if we look at these constructors, they have this description of the action parameter. So in this case, we can only use this constructor if the action was a reset. So we need to find what constructor is allowed for the add action. So let's scroll through those. And actually the second one looks like the one that we want. So this describes a one item change, which is exactly what we have. We added a single item so we can pass in that changed item. And that is just the item that we added. Now, if we look at this NQ method, we see it has the green squigglies and that's because we hide the base queues NQ method. So, you know, you might think, okay, object oriented programming, let's override this because we inherited Q, but NQ is not a virtual method. So what we have to do is use new as our way of hiding the base method. And I'm not going to go into the differences between new and override in this case, but the quick summary here is that this in queue method is only going to be called if the type of the variable or field that calls this method is an observable queue, which it will be in our case. Hopefully that explanation made sense. Otherwise, I'm sure there's plenty of resources out there on the differences between new and override. But anyways, we can in queue items. So that's good enough to test this out. Let's go ahead and use this observable queue in our drive through view model. So I have a queue right here. Now this is going to be an observable queue and let's import that. So now whenever we enqueue an item, oh, this has to be an observable queue as well, where we instantiate it. But now whenever we enqueue an order into our drive through, our UI should update because as we recall, we raised collection changed, which our UI is going to listen to. So let's go ahead and run this and let's select an item and add it. And there we go. We got our chicken in our orders. So that's like the customer placing the order. So maybe when the order is done, I want to give the order to them. So I would press this give button and then it would remove the order and give it to them. So to do that, we use the DQ method. So that means we're going to have to go back into observable queue and create a new method for DQ. 
This is also going to have to hide the base DQ. So we will use new. And I think, I don't think this returns void. What does this return? Oh, obviously it returns the item in the queue that we're DQing. So that's going to be our T type. And this is DQ. And we'll start off by calling DQ on the base queue. And we're going to have to put that into a variable. So that's the item that we DQ and eventually return that from the method. But what happened when we DQ'd? Well, our collection changed. So let's just copy this. And this time, our action that we're raising with this event is a remove. And we can pass in the item that was removed. So now, let's go ahead and test this out. We should have our item get removed. So first, let's NQ an item into our orders. And then let's give that order to the customer. And, ooh, looks like we used the wrong notify collection changed event args constructor. So this remove action has to specify the item's position. Well, if we're dealing with a queue, then we know that position of the item that we dequeued was at the front. So that would be index zero. So that's easier than I expected. Let's go ahead and try this again. Hopefully that's the constructor that they wanted. So let's place a couple orders. We'll do a different item, a salad. It's a very healthy restaurant. And let's submit that. And now let's give what should be the chicken because that is the first item that went through, let's give that. And there we go. The item does indeed get dequeued. So now we've implemented all the methods that we need for our drive through, but we also are going to have to override all of the other methods that change the collection so that we can raise collection change accordingly. So let's take a look at what those are. We can look at our base queue for that and that would be clear. So whenever all the items get cleared, our collection has changed and also try DQ. So let's start off with clear. So we're going to have a new method for that. I believe that was just void and clear and we'll call the base clear method and then raise collection change. Let me just copy this. But this time what happened? Well, we have a few options here. We have reset, so the contents of the collection changed dramatically. I think this is a pretty dramatic change, but you could also argue that it should be a remove. But if we look at remove, this specifies that an item, so implying that it's singular, was removed from the collection. So I'm not sure about that. I think reset is a better option here. So we're going to do that and pass in nothing to this constructor. And I feel like I should test this out. So let's change DQ into clear and then try this out. So we'll throw a bunch of fruit cups in here. And now let's click give, which is actually going to clear all the items. And there we go, as expected. And then the last thing we want to do is create a new method for try DQ. So I believe this returns a Boolean for true, false, for success. And this is try DQ. And it has an output parameter for the item that was DQ'd if it was successful. So that's going to be our T type. And we'll call that item. And we'll call the base try dq pass the output to our item parameter and we're going to, have to put this into a variable to return it at the end of this method which we will do true false for success and then gonna have to raise collection changed and this is going to be exactly the same as the dq method so we can just copy that and paste it because it's pretty much doing the same exact thing so let's go ahead and run this and actually maybe i should only call that if it was successful so if we did successfully dq an item then we should raise collection changed. Otherwise, we don't need to raise it. And if we did raise it and it wasn't successful, then this item we pass in will be null. So that's probably not a good idea. Let's go ahead and try this out. First off, update our view model to use try DQ and throw in an output parameter even though we don't use it. So place a bunch of orders and then give an order and same functionality we do successfully. DQ the item with try DQ. So there we go. We have created our observable queue. So our UI does update as we NQ, DQ, clear, or try DQ items from our queue. And keep in mind, you can do this with any kind of data structure, such as a stack. Maybe you have some kind of weird tree that you're binding to somehow. All you'd have to do is provide some kind of API that raises a collection changed event on I notify collection changed whenever the items in that collection are mutated. So keep this in mind if you need to create your own custom observable collections for some kind of different data structure other than a list. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you're enjoying the channel or enjoyed the video, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.